I am going to talk to you uh, on things which are a little controversial. Uh, if you think you are going to get a nice, quiet talk, forget it. I don't, as the saying goes, I don't do normal. And therefore, the things which I bring up to you are things which I have done. Which you will look and say, yes, but ah, is it so, is it not so? The first talk which I have got is holding the territory corner of the rose contact and snacks and things. It is something which is a little out of the ordinary. Next. Oh, the, oh, the next year, sorry. Uh, what led us to this study? Interestingly enough, as we know that before there is no progression of character bonus after doing CCR in a number of cases, especially after for a period of five to seven years. And the other thing which is interesting is that after you do a CCR, you always feel the body is unstable. And it takes three to four months to recover. So, CCR, as you are aware, you have to do a superficial ablation of the body. Either you use a trans technique as I use utilizing the shoe laser or you can just ablate the cornea. And uh, you should have a minimum thickness of 400 the curvature of the cornea should be, should be less than 50 by the apples. But the question is very stable. Since we know that the cornea is unstable for the first four months, and if you do a refraction period, daily sometimes widely, the question came about <coughs> was can this unstable cornea be molded to reduce the astigmatism? And even reduce the myopic residual quantum with no risk to the cornea. The whole idea was, can we shift the apex of the cornea to the middle rather than to the base where a character body cornea lies? And will that then improve the quality of vision which you get? Ortho K is not a new idea. Reshaping the eye with the has been practiced for a number of years. 2002, FDA granted approval for what we call the cornea refractive therapy system and the so called Reverse geometry of the lenses is what made orthokeratology work. In the olden days, those of you who have done it in the earlier days know that after a period of time, the body and the longer can be made to bend any forward. It's what we call a macro effect, and it doesn't work. Orthokeratology lenses have been made by a number of companies, I won't talk too much about that. Just to mention that you have to remember the TK value, that is the transmission through the body and through the lens, which is important. And we have a system what we call the accelerator of the technology, where we utilize the techniques. We thought when we started originally working with these orthokeratology lenses made by Tyra, and then we shifted off to the rose lens. The rose lens, as you are well aware, is a lens designed for keratoconus, and it has one of the big advantages that unlike a regular lens where a pool occurs of fluorescence. A rose scale lens, if it is properly fitted with a proper geometry, is easy to remove and manage. And uh, you can have a fitting lens. And the big advantage is it fits on a small uh, optical zone. And of course, as you see with a regular lens, you get this little loop over here purely because the lens tends to lift upwards. On the other hand, with a rose lens, this problem, utilizing the asymmetric corner technology, which we want to talk about since it is not relevant today, but you get a lens sitting much better on a keratoconic corner. You know this keratoconic is from the plane of the liquid which is over here. Let me show you some preliminary results. This is yet unpublished series, we are still working on it. And the aim of the treatment that I said, was mentioned earlier, is that we use the compression after the doing the the C3 are to shift the apex from the decentral zone to the central zone and try and stabilize the estimator. It sounds a little radical, but deal with you for a minute. Normal parameters, progressive character bonus, minimum corneal thickness 400, maximal calorimetry reading, no corneal disease, trial lenses we fit with the C3 lens prior to doing the procedure. And we use an apical touch to include as this flatter. And the wear in the initial days is only six hours a day. More than that, you get an inflamed dye. Having said that, we use a surface ablation, a lipofrenum dye is applied every five months for a period of time. The standard procedure was done. We don't use the accelerated technique of doing CCR because, in my experience, I found that it doesn't work as well as a regular treatment does. 
and uh, we examine the patient over the period of over, over weeks, and after six months, and we examine the results. If you notice, this is one of our patients. This was the original keratoconus. Subsequently, notice shifting of the apex upwards. In this case, shifting is not so much. Notice quantum of, of changes which is tending to occur. Once again, a shift tends to occur upwards. Here you notice the stability occurring now, almost tending to remove the quantum which is there. Notice the changes as they run down the line. And this is one of the patients where we found where the improvement after quite significantly. So the dilemma now question is always the question which is asked is it the rose 3 lens which is work or is it the C3R which is work? Or have you just, as one of the earlier speakers said, uh, as, uh, is it something which you have missed? Could it be the same without the comprehensive result? And the answer is very simple. We check the heterogeneous lens curves. If they approximate to the rose lens and if the apex is shifted, it confirms this function. Now, you can do a P3 with a C3R versus the rose. There are many reports that you can cause and reduce the quantum astigmatism. But what when it starts with a 400 micron ratio, doing any ablation is a surefire way of getting into trouble. The rose C3R combination does not compromise the thickness. And therefore, goes to a better long term exercise. In the long, in the conclusion, a foreign cylindrical component is fairly significant. We still don't know the long term effects because we've been doing it over the last one year almost. The rose lens may just well be gas. So, when you are presented with a patient with a gross cylindrical aberration, when you don't want to think of doing anything else, utilizing a rose free lens, fit it, and then apply over the next three months until the cornea stabilizes, you'll be surprised at the results. And maybe if you get good results, you can send it across to you, you can incorporate it. References, I won't talk about it. Just to say thank you and a little plug for the Congress, which is occurring next year, 29th, 30th, 31st of May. It will be a great Congress. It's 25 years of success. I won't talk. I can go to the next talk. I'll finish my four talks and then if there are any question answers, we can take them at the same time. Will the commission of the chair, of course? Of course. Next, please. This is a little toy which Jerome and I have developed together. You remember, you can recall it, Jerome, a number of years ago when we were doing a, a survey where we wanted to design a chopper. Uh, which we could uh, use now for femtocatec surgery. As you are aware, with the femtocatec surgery, sorry, my next one is not working. Right. Yeah, it's working. Now, just notice this little chopper. It's got two legs, these are blunt, and it's got a plate. If you notice on top over here. You wonder why you require it. And the reason why you require it is because when you do femtocatec surgery, the nucleus is a slippery, slightly little bit of material. It tends to run down everywhere. You apply the micro on it, it doesn't stay in its place. And because you have made microbiotes in the lens particularly, it, uh, it doesn't aspirate back to the So the question is how do we have a toy which can hold the nucleus in place and make it work? Let me show you a short video and, and why you do you use it? As I said, it brings the lenses into position, enables a slow inflow and it works well. Let's see the video as it runs. This is the little chopper, as you can notice over here. And once you have done a femtocatec, all the, the whole idea is can we use this little toy to maneuver your lenses into the room? This has a little inflow in the middle of it. With the result that you can, it does not, it does not allow the slow inflow, does not allow the fragments to stay. You have done a femtocatec. 
very often holding it into place and just applying suction with negligible pinko power should be enough. But a regular chopper doesn't work that way. The nearer you just have to turn it around and hold the frame. It's like holding a piece of fish, you move it into position over a fork and enables you to hold it, stabilize it so that you can remove it very easily. It's a simple little device and uh, and all you need to do once is to bring it into position. It doesn't stick on and can be removed easily. So in essence, this little toy can enable you to do your surgery with comparative ease when you're doing film procatter. And after that, of course, you can uh, position your lens in utilizing the positioning system. This is the right system which I'm using, which enables me to get my access at a particular plane that I wanted to go. So the advantage is position fragments rather than letting them mill around to stabilize it and collect easy manipulation. Results used in a, six, a small series of 300 cases show that it works very well. There are virtually no, no complications worth talking about. It's a new device. It works great. We have no patent rights on it. And uh, you're free to in case you wish to make it yourself, make it or you wish to buy it, you can buy it from a company in the Indo Germany. Let's go on to the next talk, please. The next talk is the keratoconic eye, successfully with ICL. Now if you are presented with an eye with the keratoconics is much more severe. How do you handle these cases? And the whole idea is that we utilize the chronic ICL and the whole idea behind this paper is to analyze the efficiency, stability and predictability of ICL and chronic ICL. To make myopin estimatism in high keratoconic eyes. Here we have taken eyes and which are ranges from 9 to 2 to 19 in the average with a mean of minus 9. A refractive cylinder running from three and a half to nine after 35 years. These are nasty cases which normally you look and say, ah, and I don't think they do require it. Okay, or you say that you are actually. And uh, these are the ones which are no significant loss. So we do see three at first. As a regular routine, we first do see three at the middle of correction. We wait for three months for the body to stabilize and follow it up by going ICL. Treatment guidelines are regular, nothing extraordinary. We use a UVX system and the Schwind to do a PRK. And this is a keratoconic, keratoconic pre-operative and our post-operative assessments as we have done there. But as you notice, there's still quite a bit of residual estigmatism. This is the Swedish white images running down the line. But the two important variables you have to remember is first of all the pot and the visual design. Warding is very important when you put in an ICL and the two instruments we tend to utilize essentially are the Dinaki and the Schwinn and Schwinn through the images, they produce more consistent results despite the fact that the company says we can do our measurement and this essentially tells you the anterior for depth and the positioning which is what we do and now after we do it, we need to examine the warding once in a while you're going to be left with a high watts, this is 695 microns. We normally let the watt to stay in the range of 400 to 500 maximum. Do remember that over a period of time, the watt will decrease. And you see that happening in the last, uh, last 4 to 5 years, that the watt goes down by almost about 15 microns in the period of 5 to 7 years. So you do need to have an adequate watt. This is what we call the good watt for 81 microns. Now let me Take the next one and quickly just show you a quick video of the implantation of the Tolik ICL. Essentially, the procedure is fairly standard nowadays. You group it into place. Uh, we have also started working with the IPCL. Because the IPCL once in a while it doesn't get fast. These results which are a little variable. I was just stuck onto the, the ICL, which seems to give us a, a pretty good result running down. And of course, we put in the technique treatments, similar to present. We still haven't got access or access to pre-loaded ICL here, but the procedure is fairly simple. We won't talk too much about it. We utilize the Zeiss positioning system to be sure of getting a perfect setting of the product ICL. And the results are the important thing is the accountability in 110 eyes we followed them up, almost in 99% of them up to 12 months. And the predictability is there. Mind you, we have taken cases which are off the line. 
So we don't get results every day, and ninety percent it doesn't exist. If we get a fifty-seven percent result at the end of one year, I think it's a great result. And the estimated stability, on the other hand, followed up over a period of six months, shows it is pretty stable. So putting a total ICL inside the eye, followed by an app ICT, and literally a less into one point, a change in less corrective visual acuity is not too significant. And the most important thing is patient symptoms. They are little a little bit of glare, halos, and a little double vision, and eye driving problems are there. But however, if you ask the patient, the very best for our ICL surgery again after a year, you notice that most of them turn on serious. So in visual results, in six months, 90 percent of the patients are within the one diameter of what we call the attempted refraction. And the 78 percent of the of an actor or estimated component, which I think is fairly reasonable, no eyes are lost, nothing else. But as our term on says, the happiness for a C3R character patients while into the ICL is to be seen. We believe 